Okay, um, to, I didn't have time on my uh, testimony of disassociation to share some scriptures I'd, I'd, that I'd, I'd been studying over, over the course of my walk and I'd like to share those today and uh, consider these things. Uh, now it's regarding the, the miracles of uh, the Lord's ministry and his healing and his, his power and looking at the different characters. Um, now if you're anything like me, you're, you're, you're looking for that association in, in the scriptures to, to, to find understanding of uh, how the Lord's helped you in your life. And uh, so I'm going to share some scriptures and... Uh, Looking at the parenthesis of um, the Gospel of, uh, particularly Matthew and just Matthew and Luke, uh, uh, on, on a certain area of a certain individual, and and a few other individuals that the Lord has touched and healed, and um, parenthesis is a wonderful uh, way of looking at the accounts of each witnesses, and. Um, putting them side by side and then uh, gaining more of an understanding of, uh, of the picture of the scene of that uh, of that precious time that we, we've been it's been revealed in the holy word and um, so I'm going to share those scriptures and hopefully that if you're a person that perhaps can't find yourself or you've or, or, or you're looking for understanding with an affliction that you may have suffered suffered with. I'm going to look at a few key areas and uh, perhaps share and uh, some edification and, unto you or anyone that, that, that may need it in, in their in their testimony in their walk. Um, so it's a privilege to to do this and also also to be saved and to learn these things myself and um it's not conclusive these are the things i've considered and prayed about and i can uh, I relate to um very, very many accounts of the people that have touched and it's interesting how the characters we're going to look at it's so singular of what they had you know some what had devils, some sinned, another uh, brother was, you know, it's just solely for the glory of God that, that about a blind man that was healed and uh, it was all, his blindness was solely to just glorify God and there's some other interesting things that, uh, that, were, that have been revealed in, in the scriptures as I, as I studied them. So I'm going to start with... Um, Matthew, uh, book of Matthew, chapter 8, and read the account, and we go straight to the, straight to the scene. Now this is a very interesting account of a, a little village, and uh, if you know the account, it's the, uh, the man that was possessed with legions, and you know, multiple, multiple devils. And the Lord cast them out into a herd of swine, a herd of pigs. And it upset the farmers in the village. And they're all afraid. Um, let's turn to Matthew. Uh, verse 8. 28. <clears throat> and when he was come to the other side into the country of the uh, the Gergesin, Gergesin, Gerg I can't pronounce that, G-E-R-G-E-S-E-N-E-S, -E 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 there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by the way. And behold, they cried out, saying, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good, 
and there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine feeding. So the devils dis besought him, saying, If thou castest out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled, and went their way into the city, and told everything and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they besought him that he, he would depart out of their coasts. Now, that's very interesting. Um, one thing I just thought and highlight that the devils knew Jesus and they knew that they were beaten and they knew that... Um, they, they had an appointed time. Now, uh, when when you look at all this uh, New World Order stuff, and uh, like there's a, a, con a conspiracy, like there's a conspired plan. Now, the, the, the scriptures really reveal how those people are deceived because the devils themselves know that their time's up their numbers up and their role is solely to deceive as many souls as they can out of bitterness just to be adversarial against the gospel of Christ. They knew Christ because they were banished from heaven and they were cast down into the earth and they'd taken residence in, into these two gen these two men who who were like forced out into the caves and they chained them and um, they broke the chains because of their demonic strength and anger and power and they, they, they persecuted anyone, tormented anyone that come past that that route and um, it's interesting that you know a lot of these um, Luciferians they believe that they're gods and that they're, they're on the winning side but it, and, and they believe this, they use the scriptures to their own ends to, to to deceive others and they they don't believe the scripture if they believe the scriptures they see that you know the devil knows his time's up and he's he, he's on a he's on an appointed time scale he's under the he's on he's under the control of christ ultimately so i thought that was an interesting uh, point to make now the other um the other account i'm gonna we're gonna look at is uh, in luke now I think it only is in the in the four gospels. I think it only covers. I think only uh, three of the writers cover the actual account. I don't. I'm not sure if it's in John. I think it's in Mark briefly. But well, I'm just going to look at Matthew and Luke. <coughs> but it is worth uh, when you when you are doing a study, it's a wonderful thing to lay that all four accounts or as many accounts in whatever area you're studying to get a picture. And although sometimes it appears like one will meant, uh, in, uh, particularly in this account, you know, people say, oh, you know, the scriptures, you know, it's, you know, there's uh, anomalies in in the accounts, so therefore they can't be true. But what these people don't consider is that um, one writer will see see the truth and give an account and, and another writer will see the same thing and 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 give his account so uh, in one one particular verse we've got it mentions two and then in another verse it's only focused in on the one person you know maybe what one person was healed and saved and the other one wasn't it do, it doesn't say so it, it you have to consider these things when you're, you're looking from what we're looking at here is a legal the parenthesis is like a, the gospels is like a lawful account it's like a, a testimony a report a witness a witness statement of, a, of, of the lord's ministry and his actual his actual murder it's a, like a, a a lawful documented account of of christ's life and his ministry and that, that that's something that you know, it's always attacked. You know, there's anomalies in the scriptures, Bill. 
But the word's infallible, and when you lay them down and consider it, the Holy Spirit's giving you what 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 it wants, what the Lord wants you to to consider. It's just sharpening and focusing on on the points, and uh, that's why He chose these four men because their their characters are so they're so unique. If you look at Matthew and Luke, they're very larger than life characters, very disciplined, very. I think Matthew was an accountant, very intelligent men, very, you know, quite a, um, you know, equipped. And then, and then you've got uh, Luke, Mark, and John. They're, they're they're different characters. Mark's a very um, matter of fact, bang, 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 bang. And John's a very, you know, very uh, spiritual, emotional, loving person. She. It, the Lord used him for more uh, the spiritual nature, and Matthew is more, you know, very very spiritual. But he he's very precise, like an accountant. And Luke was a doc. I think he thought uh, Luke was a doctor, so he, he's he's methodical. So the Lord's using these two characters and these other two um, smaller characters it, 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 compared to Matthew and Luke, but their hearts perhaps are bigger. Um, so it's very interesting to to consider that when you when you're doing the study of the account, the parenthesis of uh, the four gospels, and with that understanding, it can really open your understanding of of gaining the the Holy Spirit to help help edify you a lot further in in your studies and deliberations and, and considerations as you evaluate what is being taught, what's being revealed. And each time you look at it, you, you're going to learn something completely different and something new from these accounts when you put the pieces on the table and actually consider and prayerfully look at these things. All right, let's get to Luke. Interesting, they're both in chapter 8, so they're almost parallel accounts, whereas uh, the Mark's very short and John... John's longer, but it covers different areas on, on, on a more spiritual nature. Um, 26, to, uh, right, Luke ch chapter 8, 26 to verse 40. Yeah, all right. And they arrived at the, the country of the, the Gadanes, Gadar, forgive my pronunciation, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land there, met him out of the city, a certain man. See, and it's only mentioning the one man this time. So it's focusing on the one man, where the other account gives two. So there's two, ma two men in this area that were known about, probably infamous. But on the arrival, uh, uh, Luke's only focusing on the one, where Matthew focused in on the two, and then focuses on the the one man that Jesus was focusing on. So there's that that other man's in the background. We don't know anything about him. He, so we can only speculate. Um, and when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time, and wear no clothes neither abode in any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, Son of God most high? I beseech, me, I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of him. For oft times it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he brake the bands and uh, and he break the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. So the, uh, the the spirits there, the de the devils were saying, "Look, don't cast us out into hell." You know, we, we you know we we want to we want to remain a bit more playing our, you know, playing the the serial role that, that that they 
that's all that they can do. And they were fearful of, of the Lord because uh, they knew it wasn't their time to be cast into hell, into the deep, into the, you know, into the bottomless pit. Um, and there was a herd of many swine. And that's just, this is showing the Lord's mercy to these uh, rebellious, banished a uh, angels. That the Lord was merciful even, even as much as he could be. And he grants their wishes, but, you know, it freaks the animals out and they panic. As you would, having demons uh, take up residence in, in your, in your uh, body. And there was a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they fed them, when they that fed them saw what, what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. They also which saw it told them, by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Um, then the whole multitude of the country uh, of the Gadonaires round about besought him to part from them, for they were taken with great fear, and he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were be departed besought him that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way, and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. Um, now... So, it's interesting in, in this account, I should have looked up really the, the third, see if I can find it quickly. Um, but it's interesting how th this man that had, uh, this, is, this is what draw my interest, um, suffering from disassociation because I, I have some relation to this uh, I can relate to this although, although I, I don't believe I was possessed with a legion of devils but uh, that was quite possible and I didn't recognize that so when I was saved when I called upon the Lord you know that the, the Lord the strong man cast it you know gave me his Holy Spirit and pushed these demons out you know um, and I, I saw a, a relationship here to trauma-based disassociation, and and this is this was my seeking and and questioning and prayerful, you know, consideration in the Lord. Well, Lord, did he, did, did this man did, was he traumatized as a child? Perhaps is there something going on in this little village that? That, that caused that, you know, is there some sat pagan worship or some sat satanic coven, you know, it doesn't say, so I can only speculate and consider these things, but this man would have been trauma-based tra um, trauma disassociation and he had that fractured... Um, compartmentalized personality that all these devils had taken up host within him and, you know, tormented this poor man and cast him out into the wilderness. And he was, a, you know, they called you a lunatic or a madman. He was, like, demon-possessed, mentally unstable and just bark and growl or attack people because these demons were just, like, plaguing him and take, overtaking him and throwing him around the place. 
And then we find him at the uh, the feet of the Lord in his right mind. He's whole. His faith has made him whole. But it's interesting that he wants to follow Jesus. But Jesus says, "No, go, you know, go into your town, go into your village, and and tell tell these people how merciful, how what great things the Lord has done for you." And then we don't see any more of this. And I thought, well, that's a bit like me. I feel a bit disabled to, to take up a full-time, you know, ministry because, um, you know, you ha you suffer these afflictions. That this man was whole just at this particular point in his life. You know, we don't, the Lord knew what this man was going to go through, and he may he may have like falling apart he may you know once the lord goes and he, he's left to himself and he loses his faith or you know the satan comes and uh starts having a go at him he he's going to re re go back into his shell i'm not saying that the devils are going to retake up host because that's been dealt with clearly you know because of, he's in his right mind now the lord's not going to well he may not have been saved it doesn't say but he, the devils were cast out, so he, he was saved at that point in time. But it doesn't say what happened, so we can we could presume that he he wasn't saved, or we could pre presume he was. My personal thoughts: he was saved because he's going to witness. He's he's going to be a testimony. So why would the Lord have an unsafe person go and testify how great things the Lord has done? That doesn't quite add up. So I, 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 I would like err on the side of this man was saved. You know, that would, that would be my, my reasoning and consideration that he was saved, but he was poorly, he was broken, and he, the Lord was merciful and understood that he couldn't follow Jesus everywhere he went. He would have, he would have probably been too much of a burden for people because he probably needed, uh, he would, on the road, he would have needed, you know, that constant, perhaps an extra bit of supervision that unrealistically could be provided and it could have caused a lot of problems. So the Lord just said, look, go home, go to your place and testify. And there may be other reasons for that. Um, so I've considered that perhaps this, this gentleman, this man, was left in this community because he was a testimony to perhaps this practice, this M if you know the MK Ultra practice, the you know it was deliberately practiced back in those days. There is historical accounts of the trauma-based mind control being practiced in Egypt and other cultures, and uh, keeping people under bondage and deception by delusion. And I'm wondering if there's like satanic, rich sexual abuse going on in this village. Um, maybe that's that's part of what upset these people and they asked the Lord to go away or it could be a simple case that they were frightened it was a supernatural event and it spooked them they couldn't grasp it and they were but it didn't turn them to faith it didn't turn them to repentance and belief so that makes me consider well perhaps their sins are very big very heavy and perhaps the Lord discerned and knew what he would have known what was going on and said and thought right i use this man i use this as a witness and he can i'll preserve him i'll put my seal on him and i'll, I'll let him be a witness and a and a, a, a hot iron on their conscience to like you know bring them to repentance or condemn them uh, you'd be a hot you know like a a hot rebuke to these people and uh, that was my uh, thoughts really and I wanted to share that and so um, and also if, perhaps if you're f like me you've got that um, you know chronic disability and you're looking for that understanding and you're feeling beaten uh, you know you're beating yourself over or, you know having a ministry or, or, or or your service is affected by that your functioning your your abundance of life is perhaps um affected and it, it's something that's 
getting in your way because you're perhaps comparing yourself with other people and not really looking at at your own salvation and uh, what the Lord requires of you. You don't want to compare yourself to other great people or other or not so you know not so great people. You want to look at you know what what it is the Lord's done in your life and perhaps that perhaps that will that's what helped me progress and grow was considering these things and I, I was very uh, beat myself you know that was the, the world's conditioning that you, you performance conditioning you know you, you, you swing from pole to pole and you, you don't do what you should be doing and um, and that could be just from a, a negative mindset or a conditioned mindset that, that needs breaking or, or, or addressing um, so that's one thing I wanted to share. Now I'm going to look at some other accounts just to consider, of, of uh, you know, the Lord's healing and 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 their personal circumstances, how they're very different. And another thing to consider is that the Lord's focused in on these soul soul accounts as like one reason for this person's affliction, and they, and they vary, but there's no real account of multiple you know there's there's a um, we're going to look at uh, this the, the woman who had a issue of her blood um she possibly could have been a, a is it haemophilia um where you keep bleeding she, or she had some blood disease and she touched the lord's garment and and then we got the blind i'm going to look at the blind man and the man at the pool so we're going to look at these accounts and then consider you know you, they even in your own personal life, you, you could be a combination of more than one. You know, it could be for sin, it could be to glorify God. You were born with an affliction to glorify God. But you could be falling in sin and causing other problems. So this is one thing you need to consider when you're looking at your own personal life, your own personal circumstances. And that's what I'm trying to highlight and share. Um, so let's start in there. Let's go to John. First chapter 9. Uh, okay. And Jesus, uh, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind. Do you know? <laughs> I think it's funny how the disciples immediately focus on what's what's this what dirt's this guy been into <clears throat> and and they get a surprise. Jesus answered, Neither have this man sinned nor his parents. Now, this is a wonderful account. I think this is such a unique account. Neither have this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. So this this blind man from birth has been blind and more than likely trying to make ends meet. He's, he he's, would have to go and beg, you know, what else could he do and rely on the charity of his of the fellow Israelites, the fellow Jews and their or or any any stranger passing by who had took compassion on the blind man. You know, maybe his parents helped him, made a sign or or something and or give him a helped him, you know, helped him to help himself. Um so this this right up until that point that man's life was solely you got you consider this that man's life solely was for the the glory of god and i i think that's an incredible incredible story and testimony that he you know he went through all his life not knowing why he was blind we did, no it doesn't say what's in his heart it's, it doesn't even mention anything about his sins or anything he may have been the most pure pure in heart person you'd ever likely to meet or he might have been a sinner and you know it, it just doesn't focus in on his sins it, it's focusing on his affliction of being blind and 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 that was solely 
for that moment in time. So the Lord, in, in his pre, preeminent wisdom, knew that there would be a blind man in Jerusalem in his ministry. And we're going to come to some other things that the Lord pre-knew. Um, so he was spending his whole life up until that point just for the Lord to meet him and heal him. I think that's very uh, touching. Very incredible testimony. Um, and this is how the Lord healed him. When he, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of, clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by the interpretation sent. So even the name of the poor was just solely for this man. That is, it is just incredible. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. And it's like a road mentioned in Paul's ministry. It's called straight. I think, you know, these, the Lord, everything is just so perfect. Um, right, let's look at some... Let's look at some more. All right, John 5. After this was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is, in, is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Beth. Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, or blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Now, we, we have here an angel, certain times would go to the pool to stir it. So these people would have, it would have been a famous place in Jerusalem that people would, that sick people would have gone to in the hope of being healed. So the Lord has mercifully put an angel over this pool to prepare these, to, to gather these people here for his ministry. So when he comes, he knows that there's a, a group, a clump of people waiting for him. So he, obviously he's going to hone in on that place to glorify his father and, and, and to perform his work. So that angel was given charge of, of that pool to go and stir the pool at certain seasons. And then the people, because it, the Lord couldn't just heal everybody, it, it shows the Lord's merciful even before his ministry, the dispensation of his ministry to take into active effect, he's placed this angel there to say, stir that water to keep those people in that spot and give them hope and give them healing. So there would be healings going on, miracles happening. We don't get an account, we get an account that those miracles happen, but we're not getting any, there's no record of these testimony of these people being healed. But it does say that these people were healed by their faith when when the angel troubled the water and they, they, they rushed to get in it. You know, now, now you might look at it on one hand and think, oh, that's really cruel. And no, that's very merciful. The Lord couldn't heal everyone. You know, he would, he, he could, but he wouldn't because he does things wisely and in order. And and, he, and it's the time coming for his ministry. That it was, it, he knew what he was doing right down to the last little um, dot and comma. Um, Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will that will thou be made whole? Will that thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. 
and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked and on the Sabbath day and on the same day was the Sabbath which caused a lot of contention with, with the with the Jews with the Pharisees with the with the you know the higher mighty the the leaven. Um, afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him behold thou art made whole sin no more lest the worst thing come unto thee the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole so this man's affliction was solely through his sins it doesn't say what those sins were but those sins had brought about you know this this um lameness now he could have had an accident he could have been a you know a bit wild a bit rebellious and climbing up buildings and fell or you know he's going off you know doing impulsive things maybe jumping off things and he broke his paralyzed himself and that was his sin you know and possibly i'm not i don't know but um he done something that caused that affliction and the Lord says to him, reveals to us that it was sin that caused that disability. And the Lord in his mercy healed him and said, but sin no more, lest a worse thing come about you. So that man could have, that would have kept that man on the straight and narrow if he would have trusted in the Lord. And that would have prevented him from perhaps his impulsive nature or his his frustration or whatever this ma this man's sin was and it and it helped deal with it and it helped the lord helped him deal with it to keep him you know healed and to keep his um you know whether this man truly i'm sure he appreciated what had done after suffering and then being healed he would have been absolutely over the moon praising the lord um in his heart, you know, in, in, it, it would have been such a, a, a marvellous thing to experience, you know, being paralysed one minute and then healing, healed the next. Right, um, let's go to another account. Right, let's go to Luke 17. Uh, okay, right. So there. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show that yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, answering said, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Now notice it was a Samaritan. You know, we have the account of the good Samaritan. Now the Samaritans were humbled by their... You know, they were the seed of Israel, but they were... Um, because of the sins of Judah that it caused the whole tribes of Israel to go astray and, and then they went um, mixed with the harlot nations like the Babylonians and then the, the, the bloodlines would have been interbred and crossed and the Samaritans were the, the result, the fallout of the consequence of mixing the bloodline because the, the Lord wanted to keep the, you know, he wanted to keep it pure and in the family not to mix with with outside the um the heathen the gentile races people without the law these people didn't have the law of god whereas the jews were and then it was vital for them to to marry their own kind to keep the tradition and the law and the gospel preserved and, and, and give it a free course through 
through the seed and, and through the heritage of, of the Israelites, but they sinned and it all got mixed up. And the Lord only could preserve a small branch, which was, and he, he, even that had contamination. And you look at the Lord's line, and Ruth was a Gentile woman. So even in the Lord's line, we have Gentile blood, but the Lord was predominantly from the house of uh, uh, Jesse, the, the King David, that's the royal line, and the Lord Jesus was the heir to the throne of Israel. And that would have been known about um, the Roman census had a record, so they would have known that Jesus, lawfully that Jesus was the heir. By doing this history and family history, if anyone would have really looked, they would have known that Jesus was from that royal bloodline because of um, the testimony and faithfulness of his, um, his, his earthly mother, Mary, and his... Uh, Eternal, not not his heavenly father, but Joseph, you know, his stepfather, you know, they were both related to the royal bloodline. So Jesus was actually heir to the throne of uh, to be the king of Israel and the high priest. But that was all denied, and because they were in captivity to the Romans, you know, that was all in exile. That that had been cut, you know. So there. The Lord was blocked at that point, but he knew that, and that's why he come at that point for his ministry to, as the Son of Man, to humble him, lower himself, to become lower than everyone, to, to, to lay his life down in, in obedience to the will of his Father, to, to die for the sins of the world. And, and if you notice that the Lord used spit in, a, in the clay and made a little bit of you know mud and rubbed it on his eyes and it, and and that that's there's nothing in that that was just the a method, that was a catalyst a method of to engage to help the person believe you know to to give them some like physical something to associate to trust in the lord it was just an instrument the lord could have done anything you know but he chose to spit you know, it wasn't his magic spit, it was his power and grace. The Lord could have just said, touch, just said, heal it, or not said anything, just could have healed him. But that wouldn't have shown faith of the believer. And that helped the believer have faith, you know, in, in trusting it. And if he'd have gone, oh, that's a load of nonsense, he wouldn't have been healed, but he did. And he was healed. And, these and only one of those lepers turned around to thank him and glorify God. You know, what happens to the other lepers? It doesn't say. And leprosy is a, 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 contam a contagious disease. So there's another, that you know, that's another thing. You know, it doesn't doesn't say it's through sin. It's just, they call it a disease from sin. And because of sin, we have diseases and death. And these lepers were like isolated. You know, they had to cry out, you know, warning, let, ring a bell or something that let, disease you know so the these 10 lepers i think it would have been you know lawfully controlled you know because they, they, you couldn't go around like spreading your leprosy and maybe individuals may have resented having leprosy and you know tried to contaminate other people but only this one man came back to um, thank god All right i think i've got one more case and I'll wrap it up. Right, this is the this is probably one of my favourite accounts of, of healing, uh, other than the ones I've mentioned. These are I've picked these out because they are, you know, they really touch me. And a woman having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood staunched. And I think staunch means, I'm going to look it up later, I think it was blocked. So I'm wondering if this, this, this lady had a, like that uh, condition where you can't stop bleeding and no one could heal it. And uh, so perhaps she was always trying to, you know, she's always 
if she, if she had a cut, it wouldn't heal. So she she might have had a, an injury and she kept bleeding, and she had to keep bandaging herself, and that would have caused him, you know, the dangers of infection. I, I I don't know if that was what's the case. I'm gonna look at this word, and that will perhaps give me a bit more understanding of what the can, so I can have a look what the condition was. You know, but that's not important. Um, but. It, it, she had an issue, you know, she had a physical, like, uh, an illness where, you know, you think of, like, um, uh, any, any condition, uh, medical condition, um, diabetes, that sort of thing, is a condition like that, um, you know, a physical manifesting condition. There's no, no spiritual demons involved here. This is just a genetic problem that this woman had. Leprosy is a contagious disease like flu. The other things were caused by sin and the blind man was to glorify God. So so I've picked out these just these just these and there's other cases. You know, you know, the the young man the, the lunatic has thrown himself on the fire, that was demon possession. So that that's another area you can look at. So if you pick out all the healings people people that have been healed you're gonna you're gonna relate to it in, on a personal level um, so I'm gonna finish this came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately a issue of blood was staunched and Jesus said who touched me when all denied Peter and they that were with him said master the multitude from thee and pressed thee and sawest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody have touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. Now, that is just a, a wonderful account of virtue, which is like the Lord was full of his grace and somebody touched him and drew it out of him and he perceived that, he discerned that. You know, and, that, and, and it says in the scriptures, like, it's not good for a man to touch a woman. And and you think if you're if you're carrying kind of like emotions and 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 desires and you know whether they're good desires or right desires and somebody touches you they they can get an impression of that because you know we're we're living entities we're sensitive spiritual beings and we have virtue and you can touch somebody could touch you and it could make you feel really uncomfortable. Or it, or it could make you feel good, or it could draw out of you, you know, compassion or, or mercy. So that's a good spiritual insight into the spiritual nature of, of, of our souls, of our, our bodies and our souls, of the spiritual, the spiritual element of, of our souls. And the Lord's virtue was drawn out from this woman's faith she she believed in Jesus she trusted him and she you know she just was too frightened to ask for some reason she was shy and timid and perhaps didn't want to bother the Lord so she thought oh, I'll just go up and touch him and I'll be healed and when the woman saw that she she was not hid she came trembling and falling down before him she could declare unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she uh, was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. I think that's beautiful. Um, so I'd really like to just share that in case anyone that is... Uh, you know, looking for understanding or trying to work out what it is they're, you know, they're, they're suffering with, especially if it's a tricky thing that very few people are really going to understand. And I'm hoping that that sort of provided some edification and understanding. And, and that's been a blessing to you, and I, and I pray so for, for the Lord's sake. And I'm going to leave it there in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.